James Allen of the Times Union joins us in this time slot every Friday morning, fall, winter, and spring before he finally gets a little bit of a break. And we do it even though Roger is not here. James, Chris Sonorato, and Brian Mariano with you here, man. How are you? Good, Chris. How you doing? We're great. Uh, I want to ask you about the lacrosse games last night, of course, to start things. Uh, Lucas Quinn with five goals for Niski Yuna and the Silver Warriors exact a little bit of revenge anyway uh, from last year's loss to Shen 10-7. Uh, what was your takeaway from that one and what ended up being a closer game than than it looked like early on? Yeah, it was a really good start for them. Uh, Quinn was really hot. I mean, he made his first five shots, but uh, it, it sort of you know, took the tenor of the, of the matchup last year where Shen, you know, was down, only down 5-4 at halftime. And, um, this game you know, went 18 minutes. They went, you know, eight minutes, the last eight minutes of the second quarter and, and uh, you know, over 10 minutes of, of the third without scoring before, uh, you know, finally getting things rectified. They, they changed some things up and they made a couple diagonal passes and were able to get, uh, Shen's defense over rotate a little bit, and they were able to take advantage of it with uh, some goals from uh, Michael Doxey and, and Griffin King. And you know, it was it was a, it was a much better performance from from Shen's perspective compared to Tuesday. I mean, they just they didn't even look like they were uh, much of a match against Shaker. And you know, now we're going to get to see this. You know, Tuesday we'll get to see the the, the two teams that are undefeated in in the, in the suburban council uh, meet up on uh, Union College, and that's Shaker and this unit. I think the one good thing about it for, from Shen's perspective is that they played much better in this game than they did. And, you know, Nisky Una certainly had their moments where they were they didn't play that well, but it was a nice response for them in the second half. And um, they don't meet in the playoffs this year because uh, Nisky Una's back in B, but uh, certainly for them, from Nisky Una's perspective, it was a win that they definitely wanted. James uh, Niski ranked fifth in the state, and, and you mentioned Shaker. We certainly cannot overlook them. 14-0 and this season. Have you had the chance to see the Blue Bison, and and how will they match up against Niski? Well, it's going to be a very interesting matchup, uh, Chris. I covered them Tuesday, and I covered them uh, a week earlier against uh, Boston Spa, and they're really playing well. They're very uh, they're very talented uh, out front. Where they got two outstanding uh, attackmen that really do so a lot of damage in Jack Cheney and, and uh, Luke Julian and their midfielders. They got two outstanding uh, seniors that are four year starters and, and Nick Pepe and and Michael Stiso. And you know one of the things that's you know interesting about it is I don't think people realize that their goalie is their offensive tackle from the football team, and that's uh, Brendan Morrison, who's actually had a pretty good year and. Uh, you know, certainly Anthony Cabano's kind of a, the, the guy who's most widely regarded, uh, you know, great goalie in, in, in uh, the section from from uh, Shannon. He deserves that, you know, especially the performance he had last year in the, in the sectional final against this unit. But uh, Morrison had some a couple of big saves against uh, against uh, Shen uh, on Tuesday, and he's going to be really important. It's, it's a really good test for both. It's a nice way to kind of go into sectionals. They won't have to worry about each other when they get to sectionals. And I think uh, from from both teams' perspective, it's it's really a big one. I think from from probably from Shakers, it's a little bit more because this team have played a couple of really tough teams outside the section that they lost to in, in St. Anthony's and, and Darien, and they're nationally ranked you know pro- programs. Both of those teams and. You know, for, for Shaker to play a team like Niski right before the playoffs, even if they lose, I mean, I don't think they want to lose, but it's a great way to kind of, you know, gauge yourself as you get ready for, for what's going to be a very interesting sectional uh, for both the A's and the B's. And certainly lacrosse fans well aware of a Shaker product uh, finding success early on in college. Stephen Rafis had a, had a really nice year uh, at Syracuse. Over on the girls' side of things, James, Shen Lacrosse beats Niskiuna by a goal yesterday, six uh, five. And I, I read something of yours recently about this Plainsman team looking for its first lacrosse title. Uh, what is your impression of this Shenandoah girls lacrosse team? A lot of talent, a lot of talent, Chris. They really do have uh, up front, the, the, you know, the midfield and at the attack. They really uh, they, they have a lot of different weapons. They don't depend on any one player. And uh, they're hungry. Uh, they felt like they let an opportunity to get away last year. 
um, in, in losing the semis, and they want that opportunity to to be the, be the team. I mean, they've certainly respected you know Gilliland and, and Shaker and and Bethlehem, the programs that have kind of dominated the landscape over the last 20 years. But you know, they've they got to the final a couple of years ago. They weren't able to they got they got squashed by Gilliland, and they they think it's their time. And you know, again, another interesting matchup for them right before the. The start of the sectional, they play at Saratoga. Saratoga only has one league loss. Uh, Shen only is undefeated. They play at 7.30 on Tuesday up at Saratoga, and it's a, another great uh, lifters test right before the sectionals. And um, Right now, you have to say, even though there's been some close games and, and some of the other teams have, have played well, Bethlehem's played well of late. Uh, Golan certainly very dangerous. Once again, Shaker's an uh, outstanding team, but you have to say right now that Shen's a team to beat. Baseball and softball sectionals right around the corner as well, James. And I know we will have an opportunity to really get into that with you next week once the playoffs have started seedings meetings uh, early next week. But I, before we let you get out of here, I want to get your impressions of what Jeff Hoffman did last night, getting his first career Major League Baseball win, I'm sure. Uh, in, maybe in some ways he thought it might come sooner. He's battled some injuries. Uh, he went through a trade, uh, but he gets his first career big league win with the Rockies last night. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting scenario because I mean he you know he's thinking maybe going into pre you know the, to, into the spring training that maybe he's going to have a shot to break it break it in into the rotation it didn't work out and then uh, he goes to AAA and then you know he comes up and thinks the oh I'm going to have a release stint and then I'm going to be going back and then the next thing you know um, you got a situation with uh, Anderson not able to start and he gets thrust into it and I mean sometimes that's you know. Whether it's if you're a hitter or a pitcher, sometimes when you're not expecting to to make your major league day, or you know, not a debut, but you know, opportunities like that to have a start against you know a, a team of LA's caliber, um, it, it probably was uh, something you didn't really get that much of a chance to prepare for because it was sort of a last minute thing. But uh, he did a great job. I mean, obviously the offense did a great <laughs> uh, thing for him in favor to get out to a huge lead, and uh, Ryu didn't didn't pitch very well for for LA and. You know, it's a lot easier. Uh, I don't care what sport it is. Uh, you know, whether it's lacrosse or baseball or softball or anything, you get out to a, your team gets you out to a huge lead. It's a much easier uh, opportunity to, to kind of kind of settle into a game when you know you got a, a, a huge cushion. And you know, he's got a ton of talent, and you know, he's had really had some you know some injury bugs here the last few years. But, you know, obviously started winning you know, at the end of his college career at East Carolina, and. Going to the draft, he might have been the number one pick, and then, right. you know, he wants to go in eleven to Toronto. Then he gets involved in the Tulowitzki trade, and you know, it's interesting thing is, you know, everybody says, "Oh, you don't want to pitch in Colorado," but boy, they've got a lot of you know, good young arms. Not just him, but uh, Sensatalia, and and, uh, and they've got a couple other guys that are that are really good, and uh, and they got a couple guys in, that are still in Triple A and Double A that are very good, and they've got a lot of arms, and he's uh, a big part of that, and. Hopefully he'll get some more opportunities here coming forward, but uh, certainly a big win for him to uh, to get it on a team that's not, uh, you know, that's, that's not having a great season as opposed to some of the recent years where they've been not not a contending team. This team looks like it's going to be in there for the whole for the whole season. No doubt about it. Big game. Always appreciate the time and perspective, man. And if you're looking for some reading going into the softball and baseball sectionals, check out James's piece on the Cole McCarville of Shen and find out how she got the nickname Nails. That's on timesunion.com. Big game. James Allen with us here every Friday morning on Big Board Sports. Thanks, James. Appreciate it, Chris. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon.